Hafideh Todas Hamzu, thank you for your participation in today's virtual public hearing. This virtual public hearing is convened by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets, with the first notice distributed on Thursday, August 6, 2020, and the second notice on Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. The virtual public hearing notice is also posted on the legislature's website at www.guamlegislature.org. Today is Thursday, August 13th, 2020, and the time is now 6.01. This virtual confirmation hearing is now called to order. Sidhuismaasi again to everyone for your virtual attendance to this afternoon's hearing. Well, evening. <laughs> On the agenda for this evening's virtual confirmation hearing is the appointment of Maria Flor Herrero to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees, Guam Educational Telecommunications Corporation, otherwise known as KGTF PBS. The committee will receive oral testimony for E. Magahaga's nominee and will continue to accept written testimony from the general public, which shall be made a part of today's public hearing record. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, just recognize who is here. We have Maria Flor Herrero herself. We Hello. also have very good. And we also have uh, Ms. Ina Carrillo, who is the executive director for KGTF PBS. We also have, um, uh, sorry, um, let me expand my uh, expansion here so that I can see everybody. Um, we also have board member Ms. Rosemary Clements and board member uh, Joseph D. Frankes who have joined us here today. And we're very pleased to have you. Um, we don't always have the, the opportunity to have many board members attend. And so we're very, very uh, grateful that you were able to make that time to be able to attend. And then I also have from my office, we have uh, my chief of staff, uh, Mr. Alan Verliberti and my, uh, Community liaison, uh, Mr. Victor Leon Guerrero, excuse me, <laughs> Luhan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Victor Luhan, who is, uh, who is here as well. And they will be attending to some of the uh, technicalities of running this hearing. So thank you so much for joining me. Before we receive and open our discussion, we will uh, first go over some general rules of conduct for those participating and in attendance. The conduct of this hearing shall be as follows. All participants must abide by rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. The use of virtual backgrounds is not permitted. Broadcasting from a room with adequate lighting specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. And to please ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone when you are called upon to speak. So perhaps if, um, we're, not all un if we're not all muted, this would be a good time to go ahead and uh, mute yourself. The chair will invite the nominee and then recognize individuals that have signed up to testify on the nominee. Individuals providing oral testimony shall first be recognized by me before speaking and shall state their name and title for record keeping purposes. The order of questioning will begin with the senators present to the nominee. This may be um, a committee of one <laughs> for, for tonight. <laughs> Uh, each senatorial panel member will be allowed to pose one question to the nominee and then be provided another round to ask further questions to the nominee or testifying panel. 
Oral testimonies may, uh, excuse me, received shall be confined to the substance or nature of the agenda. Personal inference as to the character of the nominee, senator, or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this general rule of conduct will be uh, will result in removal from the virtual public hearing by the host. I ask that all participants keep their comments or testimony to within five minutes, but you know, we're a small and cozy group. If you have more than five minutes of testimony, <laughs> I think we can easily accommodate that. So how's it going? PBS Guam has come a long way from its humble beginnings in 1970 and has provided its viewers throughout its 50 years of existence with outstanding public television programming. Programming centered on science, history, nature, public affairs, those are what PBS are known for, including programming with diverse viewpoints and front row seats to world-class drama and performances. PBS Guam also in integrates live sporting events and local productions and events. In 1975, the legislature through Public Law 12-194 officially created the Guam Educational Telecommunications Corporation with a seven member board of trustees and a general manager to operate a non-profit public corporation to which we know today as PBS Guam. PBS Guam is committed to serving the public interest by providing the people of Guam with quality educational and cultural programming, which will not only entertain, but offer important information about the world around us and our island as well. We have an obligation to maintain and assure that PBS Guam will continue to provide its services for public educational and local event television for many years in the future. The work of a board or commission member involves much volunteer time and commitment and provides an important link between the public and agency, the legislature and the governor. Each board is unique in its purpose, its mission and its role. It is especially important that members must be familiar with the board's governing statutes or other authorizing directives so that they understand the framework within the, which the board must operate. So with all that being said, I want to call upon Maria Flor Herrero to provide her testimony to serve as a member of the Guam Educational Telecommunications Corporation, otherwise known as KGTF PBS and receive testimony um, from those that have um, participated today and are present today to do so. As I mentioned uh, earlier, I'm, I want to recognize that we have both the general manager and two board members here uh, that are here in support. So we will begin with Ms. Maria Flor Herrero and have her provide her testimony and we will then receive testimony from the others that are here that are signed up to do so. So, Ms. Maria Flor Herrero, if you would like to begin your testimony, and then even though I've said your name several times, if you could begin with your name for record keeping purposes. Sure. So, uh, good evening and half a day. Uh, Senator Kelly Marsh Titano, uh, Ms. Uh, Rosemary Clement, Mrs. Ina Carrillo, and Dr. Joseph Frankes. My name is Maria Flora Herrero, and I'm here today because of my desire to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees of the, Educa of the Guang Educational Telecommunications Corporation, otherwise known as KGTF PBS Guam. I feel that I will add significant value to this governing body for several reasons. Firstly, I have been a resident of Guam since 1977. During this time, I have seen the island grow and mature along with it. All along, 
the One Educational Telecommunications Corporation, or KUTF slash PBS Guam, has been pivotal for our island's growth and well being, fostering unbiased information, communication, education, enlightenment, and self reliance among young and old alike. It would be a great privilege to serve on the Board of Trustees of KGTF slash PBS Guam so that I may continue to give something back to the island that has given so much to me. Through my service on the boards of the Guam Council of the Arts of the Humanities Agency, CAHA, the Department of Chamorro Affairs in Afamaulik, and lately the University of Guam Board of Regents for seven and a half years. I am well versed in the responsibilities and expectations that go along with serving on a board of this caliber. Secondly, as a female entrepreneur for the last 35 years, I bring a unique and valuable perspective to the table. I am the president of Lorea Industries, Inc a wholesaler of wines, liquors, olive oils, and other specialty items that I began in 1987. Over the course of time, I have dealt in both wholesale and luxury retail. In fact, I still receive comments regarding Barcelona Lane, the very first business, a ladies boutique, which I started back in 1988, even though it has been closed for the last 10 years. In any case, my current clients include major grocery retailers, hotels, restaurants, military retail outlets, and smaller mom and pop retailers. My direct ground level exposure to such a wide range of clients has given me insight into the unique business conditions of our island economy. My experience has allowed me to bridge the gap between critical socioeconomic concepts as well as educational and environmental concepts and doing business in the real world. An essential perspective for shaping the direction and program mix of the various KGTF PBS Guam programs. Thirdly, I would like to assist the Guam Telecommunications Corporation in growing its appeal and visibility. I believe it is possible for KGTF PBS Guam to develop as the University of Guam has done so successfully from good to great. KGTF PBS Guam has grown tremendously throughout its nearly 50 years history including producing local shows and various projects from only four and a half hours of programming in the 70s, it currently operates from 6 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week, and original materials from PBS One has been contributed to the American Archive of Club Public Broadcasting. I believe that KGTF slash, slash PBS One has done a fantastic job regarding programming in so many and diverse categories, from news and the arts and theaters like Masterpiece, to science and technology like NOVA, to the documentary, documentaries, fitness, health, sports, society and politics, food and cooking, kids programs, of course, as well as local programs. And it is precisely in the local programming, which I believe PBS Guam has still a lot of potential for growth. The Chamorro culture is rich and colorful. It has endured trials and difficulties all throughout its history. Despite so many outside influences, the Chamorro culture has been able to retain its essence and at the same time benefit from these external influences. This is why it is crucial that PBS One continues to foster, promote, and develop our local history, language, 
culture and heritage. When people are knowledgeable and aware of their roots, they become stronger in their principles and identity. Yet, PBS One cannot reach its full potential without funds, without members, without volunteers, without business partners, and so on. I believe I can be of help in this process by facilitating membership drives, fundraising, pursuing new volunteers, and forging strong relationships with our business partners, both through donations and advertising. Lastly, my late husband, Anthony A. Leon Guerrero, or simply Tony, as he was known to most of you, was a great champion of education, mostly acquired through communication and information. He believed that the only lasting way, indeed, the best way for people to advance in life was through a sound education. This leads to critical thinking, challenging the status quo, and the promise that future generations will push beyond the boundaries of those who came before them. I firmly believe that dedicating my time and efforts to fostering education and unbiased information in Guam is the single best thing I can do to honor his memory, foster his legacy on my grandchildren, and continue his dream, the advance, advancement of his beloved Chamorro people. Thank you. That was a very thorough testimony. You covered quite a few topics, uh, talking about your contributions and um, hearing about the, you know, your goal of doing some of this as a legacy to your late husband. Um, it, it was uh, very informative and you answered quite a few of my questions already. So I appreciate your thoroughness uh, in your testimony. So I just want to clarify, um, I'm not, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm not leaving anybody out. I think everybody is here in support, um, which we greatly appreciate, but uh, for Mr. Frank, were you wanting to speak or just uh, be in attendance and in support? Um, I would like to very much say, uh, just for the acknowledgement of Mary Floor, uh, thank you so much. I enjoyed listening to your uh, testimony and every uh, point that you brought out in your testimony seems to be in alignment with what we definitely would like to have in the board as it, it is right now. Uh, we have a dynamic and a very hardworking uh, staff and faculty up at the uh, at, at KGTF and uh, we are looking forward to having you as a new member and I like some of the points that you're bringing out regarding some of your goals in how we can improve uh, uh, getting PBS to be well, more, more uh, supported by the community, by membership and by uh, contributions. Great. And of course, that's a very, very vibrant part of the testimony that captured my attention. And I welcome that. Uh, and we definitely will be using that to the best of your ability and looking forward to working with you. Thank you so much for uh, making the time for, for uh, clarifying some of these goals and objectives that you have set out for you, for, for the board as well. So welcome, thank you so much. Thank you so much to you. I will be very honored to be a part of your of the board. To do a for that uh, testimony and that, um, support Mr. Frank has, uh, it's very much appreciated. So if I go over uh, some of the points, so it was very good to hear about your business background and your different board background. It's really quite, uh, has a quite a wide range, the boards that you've been on and the memberships that you've had. And I agree, I think that this is gonna really serve PBS well. 
because they too have this broad array of interests and, and this broad array of those needs that you mentioned, volunteers, business partners, and the like. And so it seems that you really have a lot of those well-rounded qualities where you can bring them to the forefront. So I, I just want to mention, and maybe the uh, general manager can, can help me clarify some of this. There have been some exciting developments over the last year and a half at PBS. And so I believe we now have, that PBS now has um, a 24 hour kids channel. Is, is that already up and running, uh, Ms. Grill? Yes. Um... In June, we launched um, we launched PBS Kids 24/7. It's actually 18 hours because we sign off at midnight, but it's 18 hours of 100% um, children's educational programming. It airs on um, PBS Channel 12.1. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's been an exciting development. Um, they have just gone through with. Uh, PBS University where there was a huge learning curve and we're incredibly grateful as a community. I heard that they created something like 300 lesson plans and that these are top notch, that they are something that you would see across the nation um, for their quality. Uh, people would just, you know, it doesn't matter where they would they would recognize its high quality. So we're very proud of PBS for that and for all of the teachers who, who had that learning curve along the way uh, to serve our community. And I think uh, the general manager was saying that there are about 700 programs coming up over the next nine months. So wow. um, I, I noticed uh, Ms. Herrero that you, you do have a teaching background. Would you mind if I ask uh, with what subject you taught? Yes, so I graduated from the University of Guam. Uh, my bachelor's was in um, education, majoring in uh, economics and, and a second in uh, history. So I did teach, uh, after I graduated, I did teach history in Simon Sanchez for about three years. Uh, but I also taught Spanish, even though my major was not in Spanish, being a Spanish speaker, a speaker so they it drafted me to teach Spanish, um, <laughs> which I enjoy. And then um, my husband and I, my husband was transferred to San Francisco to start the Bank of Guam there, so that's where, where I, how I left. Uh, while we were in San Francisco, we stayed there for three years. I, my second daughter was born there. But I also attended uh, the University of San Francisco to pursue my master's in business administration. However, um, I, I, we had to come back. We came back in 1986. Uh, so I hadn't finished my master's yet. And so what I did is I transferred from USF to the University of Guam. And so I graduated again from UOG with a master's in business administration in 19. 87. Uh, wait a minute, 1988, because that's when my son was born. He was born in April 22nd, and I graduated May, May 8th, or something like that. So I do remember. So, yes, I have been a teacher and, and I do love teaching. However, since I left the island and then I, I had uh, my children, I realized that. I really wanted to be a mother first and foremost, and um, and I couldn't do that if I teach. So I, be, uh, by opening my own business, I can I can use my own time. Most of, I I have discovered along the years that owning your own business is not necessarily easier. You really work harder because you work twenty four seven. But you you have more flexibility as to the time that you work. Yes. So my major was um, education, majoring in economics and history, and then of course business. Yeah. I see, and that really, I think, fits in a lot a lot of ways with the way that PBS has grown. I mean, it's always specialized in uh, 
education for our community and our youth. But with the PBS University and uh, this new 24-7 uh, kids channel, you know, I, I see that that background really comes in handy as well. And um, as well as those other areas that you mentioned. So you, you did mention time. As a, a busy person in our community, uh, serving on the Board of Regents and uh, running your businesses and other, other time commitments, do you feel that you have the time for this board? It meets once a month, um, and I'm not sure if there are additional commitments beyond that. So I find out that the busiest that I am, the, the more that I can do and the more that I can produce. And, um, you know, I am a widow. Um, my children are all married and have their own ch grandchildren. So I have grandchildren, four, which I love them. And I spend um, as much time as I can with them, especially in the weekends. But other than that, um, I do enjoy it. I mean, I, I do enjoy being part of the community. I do enjoy contribute the best I can. Um, I mean, this is the way I am. And, and so I, I I like to, I mean, I also belong to other clubs like uh, One Women's Club, Rotary Club, and so on. But I do feel that if I am going to contribute by my time, uh, I want to be selective as to as to which uh, organizations and and certainly the University of Guam, KGTF, and anything that has to do with promoting education in Guam, that is that is my that is my weakness. So yes, I I, I will dedicate the time. I I do think I, I'll have the time. I the University of Guam, um, it's been. It's been a pleasure. I mean, I really enjoy it. And yes, we do have several meetings um, a month. And yes, I have, I, I've chaired the nominating committee actually for seven and a half years, which I really enjoy. I also chaired the student affairs committee. But I find out that um, it is, it's been really easy. The University of Guam is a very well-run organization. The administration does a fantastic job. And um, basically my job, as well as the job of the uh, other members of the board is basically read what is being put in front of us and, and be critical and, and examine it, uh, look at it uh, and, and see. What do we think about this? Is this best for, for the university, for, for our students, for the community, and then make a decision? So, so you know, I, I find it actually very enjoyable. And I, I'm pretty sure that uh, being in the board of KGTF would be just as enjoyable. And, and also, I, I would like to think that very productive. Also, I didn't mention in my speech that um, my, my testimony that uh, I have been um, a, a client of KGTF. I have been advertising with KGTF for the longest time uh, because, you know, I advertise, uh, I, I sell wines and liquors. I, of course, I do know that people, my uh, wines uh, do not appeal to everyone, but appeals to this um, clientele who are, um, you know, maybe between their, between their 40s, 60s, they like to enjoy a nice glass of wine in the evening, and especially when they are watching their, um, uh, how do you say, uh, um, oh, the masterpiece, yeah, the masterpiece. And so, yes, I, I, I have advertised with uh, KGDF. Um, and I know how to approach, and I know that if he, if he, we are direct and persuasive in approaching uh, other business and customers uh, in Guam, we, we can have them to advertise so that we can increase the cash flow so that we can produce more programs for the community. 
So yeah, I, I, I actually I am looking forward to it, and I am sure that it will be a very enjoyable um, time of my life. Well, and it's very good to hear about that commitment and your understanding of the those kind of needs for PBS because that is really important for them. As a public corporation, they receive a certain amount of governmental monies, but you know, a, a lot of it, I, I believe the matching has to be raised and, uh, mm -hmm. and so forth. And so that just has been an integral part of PBS. And so I'm sure they're grateful for any support that they can get uh, for a board member that realizes that and is going to be part of that kind of effort of, of helping support PBS. Um, mm -hmm. The other question that I had is because you do own businesses, uh, do you foresee any conflict of interest between the work that you do with PBS and uh, your businesses? I don't think so, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I also did not mention in my testimony that um, I had contributed uh, in the past several times to, to fundraising for PBS. I have uh, donated wines and um, and when they have done wine tastings, I don't think they have done a wine tasting for tasting for a while, but I do remember about maybe eight, 10 years ago, they were doing yearly fundraisers uh, through wine tastings. And they approached the various uh, distributors in the community and I was one of them. And I always donated and contributed to it. So, no, I mean, I, I don't really think that there would be any conflict of interest. Uh, if any, I, I would be willing to, to donate and to pursue my uh, colleagues and associates uh, to donate as well whenever we, we do fundraisers. And are you familiar with the process of recusing yourself that if for any reason that it came up that you did feel that there was a conflict that you would be able to recuse yourself? Oh, yes, yes, of course, I will. Yeah, there's no question about it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I remember in the University of Guam, at one point they were discussing, the discussion had something to do with um, Bank of Guam. And, and yes, I did. Uh, I mean, I have nothing to do with the management of the Bank of Guam directly, but of course, my whole family works there, and uh, I own stock there, and so I did uh, recuse myself from from voting on on the, this aspect. So, so if at any point during my tenure as a board member of uh, KGTF. Um, any any issue regarding conflict of interest with my businesses or mine or my family's uh, that that is Bank of Guam comes into question, I will certainly recuse myself. Yes, that's very good to hear. Um, it's it's just important to um, have that assurance. So, this other senators when they go through this nomination to prepare they will read through this committee report and they'll have read that on the record you have talked about such things and that will mean a lot to them to, to hear that from you. So the other part that you mentioned with uh, the, the fundraising, we have been talking about it a little bit uh, amongst ourselves and um, you know, this is such a different time for us. It's it's perhaps going to be a time for the board and the general manager to really think about how to move forward with this. So I know that the board members are very dedicated. The general manager has shown creativity as well. There have been many new and, and very interesting and very successful fundraisers and ones that really uh, engage the, the kids sometimes and encourage education or reading habits and other things or healthy lifestyles. So 
I look forward to uh, what the board is going to continue to do with local programming, with uh, the ways that you're going to reach out and engage our youth and the rest of the community. Um, I just picture continuation of, of very many good things here. Was there anybody else who wanted to make any statement or have a question? Yes, Ms. Clement, if you can unmute yourself and then uh, start with your name. Um, I'm Rosemary Clement. I've been a board member for several years now, and I really welcome Mary Floor to our board. I think she'd be a great asset with her, her business background. Several of us are more into education, and I think we really appreciate that. And I'm very touched that she mentioned um, the legacy of her husband, Tony, whom I also knew quite well. And um, I, I really appreciate that she said that. And I know that uh, she's, this is close to her heart. So I really welcome her to join us. Thank you, Rosemary. I'll, I'll try to prove uh, true to my testimony. I'm sure you will. Thank you. Yes. So uh, it's it's very good to hear that. Thank you for sharing that, Ms. Clement. And um, if if there's nothing further, we can go ahead and uh, start closing up our confirmation hearing. So let's see. We've completed our line of questioning and hearing the testimony. And therefore, this concludes the confirmation hearing for Ms. Maria Flor Herrero to serve as a member on the Guam Educational Telecommunications Corporation, otherwise known as KGTF PBS Board of Trustees. So um, let's see. I'll look at the time. It is now 637, but I guess before we go, we can just uh, wish everybody safety and well wishes for their family. Um, we know that this is a, a really just challenging time and I'm very proud that PBS is here to, to get the community and, and our kids through some of these challenges by some of the work that they're doing. So um, it's, it's now, 638. Uh, um, I guess we'll have a good night and, and wish everybody to uh, to please stay safe. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Okay. You know, um, I do want to mention, sorry, I said that, but uh, there is something I should say. Are we still on? So the community, the committee will continue to receive any written comments about today's virtual, um, excuse me, our virtual uh, confirmation hearing. And so if you have any testimony that you would like to submit over the next several days, you can submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located on the second floor of the Guam Congress building, although um, we are currently closed, but there, well, so um, you could mail it to us, but um, email is probably the quickest way to get it to us. So with that, okay, let me read the time again. It is now 6.39 and uh, <laughs> we will officially end <laughs> this confirmation hearing. So yes, again, um, please stay safe everyone and good night. You too.